Welcome back to another video. Today's video is another answer your questions type video. And this question comes from Tim, who writes, I have an M700 drive that keeps tripping on encoder 6 trip. Can you help me out? Sure, I will try to help you out. In fact, this is a very good question because it's a bit of a complicated trip. So back here on our software, you can see I'm online with this drive. And if I go to the trip log, you will see that I have an encoder 6 trip. Now this encoder 6 trip has a bunch of text down here trying to tell you what this trip is about, but it's a little cryptic. And so I'm going to translate what this actually means. Okay. So the first bit of this sentence here basically is stating that the encoder itself is complaining about something. We don't know what it's complaining about. It's not that the drive is mad. It's that the encoder is mad about something. Okay. Or if you have an SSI encoder, uh, the power supply might have failed in the SSI. So I think this should have been better written as two sentences. But if you come down here, it kind of gives you some more information. So for a BIS encoder, which is what I have, it says that this trip indicates that the encoder has detected an error, which is a very good statement. Or it could be that this comms bit parameter is not set up correctly. Okay. Um, now I'm going to assume that this is set up correctly for Tim and that his problem is just that the encoder itself is upset. Now I don't know what kind of encoder he has. Um, I'm just going to assume it's a BIS encoder, but it might be an INDAT. But the process is exactly the same for what we're going to talk about today. So the question is, how do we investigate why the encoder is mad? Well, it turns out that Control Techniques has made another piece of software that we need. And you can find that on their website. And if you go to Downloads, Software Tools, and then you need to log in right here, and you will find a piece of software called CT Analyzer 3. Once you download that piece of software and install it, you will find a icon on your desktop that looks like this. When we open it up, you will find a piece of software that will start with this screen open. Okay. Technically, this software has multiple features in it. And the feature we're going to be using today is called encoder nameplate and comps. And we're going to select on advanced encoder options, right? Now, some encoders have nameplate data, which is cool, but most don't, so it's not that useful. But this one is very useful. So we're going to click on Advanced Encoder Comms. Now, depending on the location you have your encoder wired to, you're going to select a different position feedback interface. Most of the time, your encoder is going to be connected to the back of your motor, which is going to be connected to the drive P1. So for most of you, this is what you're going to select. But for me, my encoder is actually connected to a universal encoder module on P2 on slot 1. And then you need to select the encoder type. Now I'm going to click on a few of these just to show you how the software changes a little bit. Let's say you have a sine cosine indent. You'll notice that the actions down here change compared to, say, a BIS encoder. Okay, so each type of encoder has a slightly different uh, naming convention within the encoder. Um, so you'll have to look at your encoder to figure out what it is. But because I'm dealing with BIS today, I'm going to go to BIS or sine cosine BIS. Now, BIS encoders use something called bank and address formatting. So a bank is a big chunk of data. And then the address is a piece of data within that bank. All right. To find this information, what you need to do is open up your technical guide for your encoder. OK, so this is the encoder I'm using for my demonstration today. And it is an absolute encoder. Uh, it is, of course, a BIS interface type encoder. Now, on this page, it shows you how the part number is made up. The only reason I'm showing you this part of the encoder part number makeup is because there is this one little section right here where it has two types of power, right? So there's the normal one where it gets its power from the drive. And then there's another one where it gets its power from a battery or an external power source. Okay. 
Now, if you have this style of BIS encoder, you could see that the encoder would get mad if the battery started running out, right? And so that's what we're going to go do for our test, is just to see if the battery is upset. So before we get there, I want to show you the different types of cables this encoder has. For the battery option, there is this option right here where it has two long wires that you connect to an external battery source. Or there is the cable that has a built-in battery in the cable. In either option, the battery could run out of power or start running low. And at that point in time, the encoder might get upset. On this page, found in the technical manual, you'll see that there's something that says bank 44, address 10, will have all of these pieces of information for air logs, okay? So right here, bit four of this address 10 that lives in this bank of 44, will tell you if the battery is drop below uh, reasonable use, right? So the voltage is so low that the encoder can't really do much. Um, but it could also be that the magnets inside the encoder aren't working anymore, right? Maybe encoder is physically broken, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna read this address. Now the thing to know about this address is it's in hexadecimal. See that zero X in front of it? That means hexadecimal, right? And so we need to do a little bit of math to figure out what it is in decimal. Luckily, Windows Calculator can actually do this for us. So I'm going to open up two Windows Calculators here. And I'm going to put them in programming mode. And right here, this is address 44. So I'm going to click on hexadecimal and type in 44. And this one is 10. So I'm going to come to this one and type in hexadecimal 10. So here we can see that the decimal version of 44 is 68. Okay, so we're going to use 68 in our software. And on this one, it's 16. So if we open up our analyzer software, and we type 68, and this needs to be 16, all we have to do is hit this execute button, and the software will go read the encoder through the drive and return the value it sees. Now you can see it returned a value of zero, which means that all of these bits here are all zero, right? So there are no errors being shown to us by our encoder. And we knew that because technically speaking, uh, my drive is happy, right? It's not tripped, right? And so there are no problems with my encoder. But we can also come look at the errors. So I went to the next page here. You can see there's an error log. I'm sorry, not error, a warning log. And you can see it's still in bank 44, but it's in address 11, right? So if we take our calculator and change this to hexadecimal 11, you'll see that's decimal 17, okay? And if we read that in our software, you can see it returned a value of zero as well. So there are no warnings as well. But you can see that there's some really good warnings here. Like, for example, the temperature sensor is not ready, right? Or the temperature is too high in the encoder. Or maybe the battery is starting to get low, right? So these are all good pieces of information that you can get out of the encoder. And that is how you find out you know, why your encoder is upset. Now, that said, there's a cool little thing that the drive can also do. Let's say you have a machine control studio program in an MCI module. And I'm not gonna show you exactly how to do this today, but if you want to, you can program that module to pull this data out of the encoder automatically. So if you come over here to your drive, and I navigate down to menu 25. Now, I'm navigating to menu 25 because my universal encoder module is in menu 25 for p2 and if i come over here and search for user it will show me the three parameters that my program has to interact with in order to interrogate the encoder and i'm not going to tell you how to do it but basically you enable comms you send it some messages and it responds with some values 
okay? And if you want me to teach you how to do this, uh, let me know in the comment section and I will get a video ready for you. Let me know if this video was helpful or if you have any other questions. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on further content. And remember, if there is a specific topic you would like me to cover, just let me know. I'm always open for suggestions.